Our favorite hardware level back door that is baked directly into the CPU has managed to screw things up again with their proprietary out of band management firmware that is totally not used to spy on anybody. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. For those of you who are new to the channel or information security and privacy in general, the things I'm talking about are the Intel Advanced Management Technology, which leverages the Intel Management Engine. These are tools for remote out-of-band management. And essentially, the way it works is you have a CPU within your CPU that has full control of your main CPU, but you don't control this CPU. No, 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 no. Everything on this is proprietary and it's a black box. You don't have any type of interface with it, but it controls your CPU. And it also controls everything connected to your motherboard. It controls your RAM, your hard disk, your graphics card, pretty much everything that interfaces with the CPU. And it also has its own MAC address and its own network stack that is totally separate from your main computers, which again, totally is not used for exfiltrating your data to servers controlled by bioluminescent three-letter agencies. We promise. Now, these vulnerabilities that we're going to cover in this video today are specifically about the advanced management technology. They don't seem to necessarily be directly related to the management engine itself, like the vulnerabilities that Intel had in 2017, which affected almost every new Intel CPU, like those big scary ones that even your mom probably heard about on the news. Um, you know, Intel says that they went in and they fixed those problems and they're all gone now, uh, but we have to take their word for it because once again, they didn't open source the code. And I want to make a point here for the people who only watch videos for a couple of minutes. This code being closed source is the real problem. It's the root of all of these vulnerabilities and problems. If it was open source, it probably wouldn't be getting pegged by vulnerabilities every couple of years because the entire world's worth of experts could take a look at this source code, they could audit it, find problems with it, even fix it themselves and then all Intel has to do is just pull in those fixes for the code or they could just report them to Intel and say, hey, this line of code right here, you're doing it wrong. This is the way you want to do it. And then they can have, you know, some programmer over at Intel do it themselves. But instead, we've got this black box only testing that has to be done with closed source code where you can't actually see what's going on with it directly. When you keep your code closed source, when you keep things proprietary, what you're essentially doing is you're betting that your people that you hire, the engineers that Intel hired, are better and smarter than all of the rest of the world. They're, they're more expert at keeping things secure than everybody else in the rest of the world. And also, if the code wasn't spooky, if it isn't a tool to be used by the alphabet boys to monitor waifu debates on Mongolian basket weaving image boards under the guise of fighting terrorism, well, just show us the source code. Let us take a look. We can see for ourselves. And it would put that debate to rest if there's nothing spooky going on there. And it would also, like I said, make everybody more secure. So you're killing two birds with one stone. Anyway, on to the actual CVEs. So first we've got uh, CVE 2020-05-35, and it is improper input validation and in Intel AMT versions before these version numbers may allow unauthenticated users to potentially enable information disclosure via network access. So basically we've got data exfiltration. Uh, not a great thing. You don't want random people being able to pull information out of your servers, um, but not the worst thing in the world, right? So we'll give it a score of 5.3. Um, if we look at this vector here to get more information, the uh, confidentiality level is low. So I would suspect that uh, maybe this gives you access to some type of data that a regular employee working there would have. I mean, it's a, it's a little hard to really get specific to what type of data it would have when you're just abstracting it to a number or a rating. Um, but it's not high, right? So it's not the worst thing in the world. 
Uh, that's where CVE 2020-0531 comes in, which is pretty much the same idea. Uh, improper input validation that leads to data exfiltration. And this one has a higher score because if we take a look at the vector, oh, well, now our confidentiality is high. So now there is data that is even more important that we can gain access to. Maybe we can gain access to all the data that is on the system, which obviously uh, that's not good, especially since this is something that's gonna be used in a lot of enterprises that are gonna be storing customer information. Then we go on to CVE 2020-05-32. So this one's got a base score of high. And again, at first, seems like it's the same idea, but in addition to information disclosure, we also have the potential for some denial of service. And this is a really big deal, considering that this advanced management technology is used by enterprises and a denial of service in that enterprise world means money lost. If you can bring down some company's servers or even a server farm, which might be the more likely scenario since this kind of technology is used for managing scaled computers, you could easily throw in a ransom or something to that extent because every minute that your service is down as a company, that's gonna be money loss. That's going to be customer's loss. Uh, not to mention the fines and potential lawsuits that you could get levied against you if you're supposed to have five nines of uptime or uh, you know, if your customers are actually losing money themselves by not being able to access your service. Uh, talking about you guys, Robin Hood. <laughs> Uh, anyway, our final CVE, improper buffer restrictions in network subsystems that are provisioned by the AMT and Intel ISM versions before these version numbers uh, may allow an unauthenticated user to potentially enable privilege escalation via network access. Remote fucking privilege escalation. Are you serious, Intel? You have remote privilege pro escalation problems? You're going to get your privilege checked by some remote hacker wearing programming socks and the privilege is gonna be root? That's what we're doing now? Now, NIST hasn't finished evaluating this to give it a score yet, but Intel has. And Intel gave it a critical score. Uh, as they should, because it's remote privilege escalation. It doesn't get any worse than somebody half a world away having root access to your box. Now, maybe you're thinking, mental, this is just stuff for those enterprise chumps to worry about. I don't have vPro enabled on my Intel CPU. And yes, this probably isn't a vulnerability that will affect you directly, unless you're a masochist who actually enabled vPro and uses AMT on your personal machine. But a lot of computers out there, they do have vPro enabled. And what about the future? The enterprise technology that we have tends to make its way into consumer tech over time. Not too long ago, hyperthreading was only really used in the enterprise space and now it's almost a staple in consumer CPUs. And like I said, vPro, it isn't just for enterprise servers. The very same laptops that I used at Geek Squad to check in clients for repairs and send their repair reports to Apple, every time we fixed an iPhone, those were vPro enabled. And if you went to a Best Buy to get your iPhone fixed, which I'm sure most of my viewers didn't, and that's probably a completely foreign idea to you. But if you did, your information got processed by that vPro chip, and it might've taken a tour through the five boroughs of Spooky Town. So in conclusion, Intel chips, they were spooky, they still are spooky, and as time goes on, they seem to be getting even spookier. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, share, and ring that notification bell.